So the latest read that we read for both the Discord Book Club as well as the Work Book Club elicited a wide spectrum of opinions. For some, effusive praise for Jen Began's Big Swiss, and for others, a disinterested meh. As for me, I loved it. This was a big, chaotic, goblin-era queer story about trauma. It's also a poke at the town of Hudson, where I imagine affluent New Yorkers escaped to at the start of the pandemic to eat artisanal sourdough bread and sip hand-forged heirloom apple cider. It's a town where people were better looking than average and everyone dressed like boutique farmers. It's also a bit of a hot commodity. The book itself was involved in a 14-way bidding war even before it was published, ultimately to be snatched up by Jodie Comer. She's hoping to turn it into an HBO series with Jody herself to play the titular Big Swiss and Tatiana Maslati shortlisted to play Greta, though author Jen Began likes Aubrey Plaza for that role. Anyway, I think it's going to make a killer series. In the book, you've got 45-year-old Greta living in a rundown, uninsulated Hudson farmhouse with a beehive in the kitchen. It's described in the book as the Fight Club house with comfy furniture, Built by wealthy fur traders in 1737, it's been mostly uninhabited for the last hundred years. Well, in that farmhouse, Greta is working as a transcriptionist for the town's sex therapist named Om. And Om's relationship giving therapy is equated to being hit on, not by a yoga teacher, as his name would imply, but as an unneutered therapy animal. And as I'm reading this, I couldn't help perhaps unfairly, think of Om as a better dress Tobias Funke from Arrested Development. Now, that thought was probably put in there in my head because one of Om's clients, in times of stress, imagines Jason Bateman in her mind to calm her down, thinking that both her and Jason Bateman are both expressive blinkers. So Om is working with a client that Greta deems big Swiss in her head. It's She's hypnotized by her voice. It's a commanding voice. In the book, it's uh, likened to a blade. She imagines when she goes to pick up pastries at the bakery, it's like she's ordering someone's execution. Her own mother says it loosens the teeth in her head. So Greta learns that Big Swiss, her real name is Flavia. She's 28 years old, been married for the last six years, and has never had an orgasm. And Greta is a tad obsessed. And when she ultimately meets Flavia at the dog park, she lies about her name, lies about her job, continues transcribing the sexual therapy sessions unbeknownst to either Ohm or Flavia, even as she initiates a relationship with her. Lesbian hijinks ensue. I have to admit, it's going to stop you short because this is not some gauzy lesbian romance where the women meet playing softball and drive off into the sunset and they're super out back to raise sheep, which I admit seems a tad cliche, but is also exactly what happened to my high school friend's mother. This is a little different and a whole lot cringier. Greta, on meeting Big Swiss in person and finding out she's a gynecologist, leads with, I know you must get this a lot, but would you mind taking a look at this thing on my labia? Later on, they go out for drinks, and Greta can't help but comment on Flavia's breasts the entire evening, referring to them as nice sweater meat, pillow corners, and Freudian nips. I mean... Flavia has never been in a lesbian relationship before, and I can't imagine this is what nudges her out of the closet. But she can't help but admit being a little obsessed with Greta. Greta, the lesbian wooer extraordinaire that she is, wonders if perhaps it might be sexual, and asks, Imagine my pussy inches from your face. What do you do? Think fast. Now, imagine it hugging your face like the alien in Aliens. Still, Flavia admits to obsessing over Greta even before they met at the dog park. She remembers seeing her for the first time at the farmer's market buying tomatoes and then pulling venison cubes out of the meat freezer and falling in love with her forearms, obsessing over them for weeks, imagining them in different scenarios, hanging out of a car window, resting on furniture, floating underwater... I don't know. Is this how lesbian relationships work? Are forearms a thing? I don't get it, but I can't help but think of our own queer Canadian lumberjack, Nicole Conan. You're all a little gayer now. You're welcome. These are some big, combustible personalities, and their fireworks as they interact on the page. In an interview, Jen Began talked about these characters as enneagram types. She imagines Flavia as a type 8, a challenger, huge aura, willful, opinionated, high achiever, allergic to self-pity. Meanwhile, Greta is a type 
two, the giver, out of touch with their own needs, but drawn to powerful people. The two together is referred to as the power behind the throne. Now, I find these a bit like personality horoscopes where you can find identification across all the types if they are presented to you blind, but still a lot of fun. I'm a type nine, apparently. Anyway, queer courtship aside, what this book really is about is about trauma. Both Greta and Flavia experienced incredible trauma in their lives. I won't go into detail here, but needless to say, all the trigger warnings going into this book. Now, Flavia has nothing but contempt for what she calls trauma people. To her, they're as unbearable as Trump people. If you even suggest that they let go of their victimhood, their suffering, they act re-traumatized. Flavia doesn't even think about her trauma. Meanwhile, Greta is writing long letters to hers. What is clear is neither Greta nor Flavia are doing a great job processing their trauma. Their homes are a reflection of how they are or are not dealing with their pasts. And I can't help but think that the animals in the story are echoing notions of resilience and the need for love. Either way, I did love Pino the dog, Walter the rooster, the vultures next door, the bees in the kitchen, and of course the mini donkeys, mini donkeys for the win. I love Big Swiss. I think it's one of those rare novels that could do even better as a TV series. There's not a lot of interiority to the characters, which was a mark against this book for some in the book club who found them frustratingly shallow. But that lack of interiority means the gestures are grander and all the more extra as a result, and I think that could translate incredibly on screen. This is wild, off-kilter, inappropriately funny, bordering on cringe, and I kind of feel like it's a total vibe right now. Goblin mode is in, girl bossing is out, and I totally, totally get it. So that was Big Swiss by Jen Beacon. Really love the book. Hope you get a chance to check it out. As for me, I am headed off in a week to Portugal, to Lisbon, Sintra, and Porto. I am so looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a fantastic trip. I keep harboring notions of moving out there to live along with the rest of the world, I suppose. Anyway, I'm really, really looking forward to it. What I'm less looking forward to is the fact that when I come back home, I have less than 12 hours before I'm on a plane again to New Orleans for a trade show. So it's going to be nothing but chaos to the end of the month and probably not a lot of reading. So I'm wishing you all a great week or month of reading, and hopefully we'll talk to you again soon.